This is a sad story. It's one of those forgotten tales of epic survival that took place right here on the Great Lakes. Now I tell nonfiction stories almost exclusively because I find that the true drama with its unpredictable twist, its genuine characters and its unfiltered human experiences offer a unique allure. These real stories connect us with a tangible truth. It offers us a front row seat of our complexities, our tragedies and triumphs that shape our world. And this is one of those stories. It's an amazing tale that's compelling, it's enriching, and it's mysterious. This is Lake Huron. And way out there in the shimmering blue expanse among the white floating ice flows is a tiny lighthouse. That's the scene of our story. This is the story of Air Force Master Sergeant William J. Wyman, his watery plane crash, his survival, and then his mysterious disappearance. I'm Chuck, the channel's restless Viking. Here's that story. He was 34 years old and his next duty station was Kinross Air Force Base in the Upper Peninsula. He planned to fly his private plane from Batavia, New York to Kinross. And there he would store it, then he would get on a bus, he would go back to Batavia, load up the car, and then he and his wife Mary would move to Kinross. But he never made it to Kinross. His last known position was where he refueled at an airfield in Saginaw. And then he began the 200 mile journey north to Kinross that would eventually take him over Lake Huron. You can see the ice rolling. I've camped on the ice a few times, and when that happens, it's a little unsettling. And three days later, the largest search effort that was ever launched in Michigan at the time took place, with 400 searchers, 50 boats, crews from the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, the Civil Air Patrol, and the State Police. But they found no trace of him, and on March 5th, 10 days after he went missing, they suspended the search. It was a mysterious disappearance, but our story is just getting started. And then on April 8th, six weeks after Wyman disappeared, a Coast Guard crew arrived at the Spectacle Reef Lighthouse to open it for the season. Spectacle Reef is the second most remote lighthouse in the United States. I joined a work crew there a couple years ago, and most of the footage that you'll see of the lighthouse is from that. Did you hear that? So when the crew arrived, they found that the door was ajar and that the lighthouse was a mess. Someone had been at the lighthouse. And then Coast Guard Captain John German found a note on the kitchen table of the lighthouse. And it was signed by Master Sergeant William J. Wyman. He had documented his epic story. It's February 22nd, 1959, 65 years ago today. And the ice flows were traveling around the Great Lakes. The average temperature that year was 12 degrees Fahrenheit in February. Master Sergeant Wyman takes off after refueling at an airfield in Saginaw, Michigan for a 200 mile journey north, eventually across Lake Huron. He was headed to Kinross Air Force Base to find a place to store his plane. Wyman was flying at 5,000 feet. He was about a mile from Spectacle Reef Lighthouse when his engine quit. Now, if you're a pilot, you know that 5,000 feet is a decent altitude to be at if your engine quits over land. But if you're 14 miles from the nearest shore, that's not much altitude. And with the wind and the wave conditions that day, he wasn't gonna make it the 15 miles to shore, let alone 20 miles to an airfield. But he did see a tiny lighthouse. Probably, he thought, my only hope for salvation. This is what he said in the note that he left after the crash. I tried to make it in, but could not stretch my glide this far. I landed in the water. I did not try to land on the ice as it did not appear to be thick enough. The plane went down within two minutes, but before it did, it floated close enough to the ice for me to jump. He had crash landed his plane near the lighthouse, within sight of the lighthouse, and he stayed with the plane, which only floated for about two minutes, but at the last second, 
he jumped on to an ice floe. No ships venture out on the Great Lakes in February, and very few boats, if any, venture out. He was so far out, no one saw his plane slide into the icy water. He's all alone with only about 9,000 square feet of concrete structure in a few hundred square miles of open water. His note continued, the ice was not over two inches thick. Another large body of water separated me from the lighthouse, so I waited. Suddenly the wind shifted to the northeast and the ice I was standing on began to move. At the very last moment, one corner of the ice ground against the ice packed around the lighthouse. So he's standing on a floating ice floe that eventually crashes into the ice that's surrounding the lighthouse and he jumps on that ice. Understand that Spectacle Reef is not surrounded by land. It's just a piece of concrete with some ladders that you climb about 20 feet onto the base and then the lighthouse is on top of that. At this point, his clothes were frozen because he did fall in. But he climbs the 20 feet to the top of the platform and somehow he gets into the lighthouse. Now you might think at this point that he's saved, but he didn't file a flight plan, so no one's looking for him yet. And it, when they do look for him, he had a 200 mile route of land and open water that needs to be searched. And the search really wasn't in full swing until after three days. A lot of the reports that I've read said that there was no food at the lighthouse, but he did light the stove in the kitchen and he also lit the signal lamp. And his note continued, the radio receiver worked, but the transmitter was dead. I don't know enough about it to make it work. I have used the batteries until they are going dead. And then that night, he spent the night up in the lantern room sending SOS signals to shore. But eyewitness accounts say they saw something weird was going on with the lighthouse. And they informed the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard said, well, we'll be out there in a couple weeks to check it out anyway. Right now, I am deliberating whether to stay here or to cross the ice. From the chart, I will have 11 miles to travel. The ice looks very bad. There are large water holes, thin ice, which has broken into pieces by wind yesterday. There is hardly any wind today. We have had two freezing nights, so I ought to make it in about four hours. So it looks like Wyman decided to go. He had a couple days of freezing weather and he was expecting the weather to turn bad. And those that knew Wyman thought that he probably wanted to get to shore to let his wife Mary know that he was okay. And at the end of the note, it looks like Wyman was asking for forgiveness. I have made a mess of your building. I hope you will forgive me. I'm going to take some equipment with me, binoculars, coat, hat, blankets, etc. I will turn them into the United States Coast Guard as soon as I get ashore. He was worried about them being mad because he borrowed some equipment. There was no trace of Master Sergeant Wyman. The Coast Guard officially listed him as missing from February 24th to April 14th. The Air Force officially ended the search on April 14th. In their report, they said, after analyzing and evaluating search progress reports and the conditions of the ice at the time, it is believed that Sergeant Wyman died as a result of drowning. Master Sergeant Wyman and his wife had planned to retire from the Air Force in four years. Spectacle Reef had its last Coast Guard lighthouse keeper in 1972. But today, over 50 years later, volunteer light keepers and volunteer workers are working to restore the lighthouse as an educational institution. And I'd like to thank the Spectacle Reef Preservation Society for their help in researching this story. And if you get a chance, they could use your help, whether it's money or time to volunteer. And believe me, it's an experience you won't forget if you volunteer on a work crew. In the description, I put a link to the Preservation Society, so give them a hand if you can, and maybe the story of Master Sergeant William J. Wyman will be remembered. From the icy shores of Lake Huron, just 15 miles from the lonely Spectacle Reef Lighthouse, I'm Chuck. Thanks for tagging along for the story. We'll see you soon.